Hey guys, so in a previous lesson, I showed you an equation like this. And what I showed you how to do was how to work out what we write over here. We also balanced the equation and we identified the precipitate. Now in this lesson, we're gonna do that again, but then we're gonna take it a whole lot further, okay? We're gonna start talking about things like molecular equation, ionic equation, net ionic equation. Okay, so it's, but we're gonna do three examples. So this one, this one, and this one. Now we've done these examples in, the, in one of our previous lessons where I showed you how to do this part. But as I said, we're then gonna take those steps even further as we learn how to do the ionic equation and the net ionic equation, okay? But I didn't wanna give you all of that in that one lesson because it would have probably been a bit too much to digest in one lesson. So we've learned already that um, these ones that they give you in the beginning, they're always going to be aqueous. They're always going to be soluble, okay? And, and you can confirm with me, anything that is uh, combined with Na is soluble, so that's aqueous. Anything combined with a nitrate is soluble, so we can put that as aqueous, okay? Now, to work out what we write over here, this is what I showed you in one of our previous lessons, you're gonna put the, the two metals, so the Na and the Ca, and then you're gonna take these parts and you are gonna switch them, okay? But don't necessarily take the two, that we need to check with valencies. So you're just gonna say NO3 over here, and you're gonna put F over here. Now we need to go check all the valencies for these parts to make sure, because you can't just say NaNO3, maybe it's Na2NO3, or maybe we need to say um, calcium fluoride with a two, or maybe there needs to be a two over there. So we need to go check those numbers um, that are in on the inside, okay? So we check that using valency. So if you look at Na, Na is in group one, so it's valency is positive one. NO3, you need to memorize its valency as negative one. Calcium over here is in group two, so that's plus two. And then fluoride is negative one. So to check the valencies, these ones are now perfect, one and one. Um, but if you look at these two, we've got a two and a one. So you're gonna put the two there and you're gonna put the one there. So it's gonna end up being a little two over there. And then remember, you don't actually put the number one. If it's a one, you just leave it out. So that's gonna be CAF2. So that's the first step that you do that, okay? Now, we also need to check which of these is gonna be a precipitate. So we know that all nitrates are soluble. All nitrates are soluble, so that's aqueous. Um, let's have a look here. Anything combined with, oh no, that's not there. Oh yeah, anything combined with fluorine is soluble unless it's one of these. Now we've got calcium, so that means this is a precipitate, meaning it's a solid. Okay, now what we need to go and do is we need to go and balance the numbers that are in the front, these front numbers. Now that's where you need to learn how to, or you need to know how to balance equations. But if you didn't do these numbers first, like that number, then it would never ever balance. So you always have to make sure the numbers on the inside are balanced, before we go and balance these numbers that are um, in the front of the compound. So this is where we need to follow this technique. So we go balance all of the metals first. Now the metals are the ones that are on the left of this line over here. So that's gonna be the sodium and the calcium. Okay, so on the left hand side, we have uh, one sodium. Okay, now I know that right now this lesson looks very familiar to the ones we've done before. But then remember, we're gonna still add in ionic equation, net ionic equation, okay? So stick around for that. And on the right hand side, we have one sodium, okay? On the left, we have one calcium, and on the right, we have one calcium. So those are balanced. So all the metals are balanced. So now we can go balance all the non-metals except hydrogen and oxygen. So that would be fluorine and nitrogen. Okay, so on the left hand side, we have one fluorine, Oops, let's write fluorine over here. One. On the right hand side, we have two. Okay, so that means we're gonna have to put a two over there. You're not allowed to put a two over there. Remember, we've already, those have already been balanced. Okay, because Na is plus one and F is minus one, so they're already balanced like that. So now that you've put a two there, that means you have two Na's on the left, but only one on the right, so that means you're gonna put a two over there now. Okay, the calciums are still balanced. 
the fluorines now balanced so now we can move on to the nitrogens so the nitrogens there are two on the left and on the right hand side there are two okay good now we can move on to hydrogen there aren't any so let's go on to oxygen so on the left there are six oxygens and on the right there are two times three which is also six okay so everything is balanced Okay, guys, now this, when you've balanced it like this and you've just written everything like that, your teacher might have a slightly different name, but that is usually called something like the molecular equation or the complete equation or something like that. It's just the normal equation, okay? But now I'm going to teach you how do you go to the ionic equation and then how do you go to the net ionic equation. So let's start with the ionic equation. So the ionic equation is when you break everything up into ions. But remember, you cannot break this one up into ions because this is a precipitate. So you can't break that one up, precipitate. But you can break up all of the others. Okay, now how do we do that? Well, this number in the front is for Na and it's for F. Okay, so you could say um, you could say two, we've got two Na's. Now what is the charge of Na? It's positive, that's its valency. Then you say plus, we've got two fluorines and each one is negative because it's got negative one as its valency. So you see how that two was for both of those, okay? Now I should actually be putting aqueous next to each of those. Okay, so those that's aqueous. This is 2F minus, it's also aqueous. Okay, now here we have one calcium. Okay, so we have one calcium, so we can just say calcium. Now calcium has a valency or a charge of plus two, and it's aqueous. Here we have two nitrates, okay? So we're gonna say plus two nitrates. Now nitrates are just negative one, and those are aqueous. Ooh, I'm running out of space, guys. And then here, we're now gonna have two Na's, okay? So two Na's, aqueous, plus two nitrates, okay? Which is also aqueous. And then for this part that's a precipitate, you just write it like that. You can't break it up into ions because it's um, a precipitate like that. That is called the ionic equation because you took all of these things and you broke them up into ions okay so this is called the ionic equation now for the net ionic equation very easy what you do is you take everything that you see on the left side that is exactly the same as the right hand side okay uh here we've got a calcium oh no we don't have a, so here we have a 2no3 minus you don't have to say minus one and here we have a 2no3 minus so you take those away but you see on this side we have a 2f and here we have a Ca plus two, but we don't have that on this side. So then you cancel all of those out, and so all that we would be left with would be 2F minus plus Ca plus two aqueous, and that gives us Ca F2 solid. You see what I did? I canceled out everything that was the same on both sides, okay? I just removed the things that were the same on both sides. And now this is called a net ionic equation. Okay, let's go do some more examples. Okay, so here's our next example. So we know that this would be aqueous, right? That's aqueous because anything combined with chlorine is um, soluble unless it's one of these, but we don't have any of those, so we're good. Now any nitrate, any nitrate is soluble, so that's aqueous. These ones that they give you in the beginning will always be aqueous. Now, to work out the product, you just say Li, and then you say Ag. Then you take this part, and you take this part, and you switch them around. So NO3 would go there, and Cl would go there. Now we need to just check the valencies. So we know that lithium is in group 1, so that's positive 1. Nitrate is negative one, so these two are perfect, so we can just ignore that. Well, let's leave the charges there, just to help us a little bit later. Ag is, um, oh, Ag, must just remember, is plus one. Co is negative one, because it's in this group over here, where the valency is negative one. Okay, 
So those are all nice and balanced. So we don't need to add any funny numbers like a two over there or a two over there. The next thing is to balance the numbers that are in the front. So please remember guys, always make sure that you balance the numbers on the inside first, like little numbers like that or little numbers like that. Those must be balanced before you try to balance these big numbers in the front. Okay, otherwise it'll never ever work and that's the problem. So now we can use this technique here. So we do all the metals first. So that would be lithium and silver. Silver is not on this periodic table, but it is a metal. It's a transition metal. So um, on the left hand side for lithium, we've got uh, one and on the right hand side, we've got one. You see there's one there and one there. For AG, we've got one. And on the right hand side, we've got one. Now we can move on to the non-metals, but don't do hydrogen and oxygen. So that would be uh, chlorine and nitrogen. So for chlorine, on the left side, we've got one. And on the right hand side, we've got one. Okay, so that's all balanced. For nitrogen, on the left hand side, we've got one. And on the right hand side, we've got one. Then you can go to hydrogen, but we don't have. And now we can go to oxygen. So on the left hand side, we've got three. And on the right hand side, we've also got three. Okay, so this equation is completely balanced without us needing to add any special numbers. Now what we're gonna go do and just check and see which of these is gonna be a precipitate. So we know that a nitrate, all nitrates are soluble. So that's gonna be aqueous. And then if you combine, anything combined with Cl is normally soluble except if you have one of these, and we've got AG. So this is gonna be a solid, and it's gonna make a precipitate, precipitate. So this reaction that we've just done right here is called your molecular equation. Now we're gonna go on to the ionic equation. Okay, so the ionic equation, so you're literally just gonna go take all of the things that are aqueous, and you're gonna break them up, okay? So lithium, has a charge of plus one, and that's aqueous. Or you can just say plus like that. And then um, you say plus, then chlorine is negative because it's over there, so that's gonna be aqueous. Then silver, you must just remember that silver has a valency of positive one, and it's aqueous. Nitrate, you can't find that on the periodic table, but you need to memorize that as negative one, and that's aqueous. Okay, now on the other side, we've got lithium, which is positive, so it's aqueous, plus the nitrate, which is negative, and it's aqueous. And then this part you don't separate because it cannot separate. Remember, a precipitate cannot separate into ions, and so you end up with that. That is called your ionic equation. Now, when we go to the net ionic equation, that's when you cancel things that are the same on both sides. For example, can you see that this part and this part is exactly the same on both sides? This part and this part is also exactly the same on both sides. So for the net ionic equation, you won't write those ones down and you'll rather just say, uh, let's just write here, net ionic equation. And so you'll just say Cl minus, which is aqueous, plus Ag plus, which is aqueous, and that turns into AgCl, which is a solid. That is your net ionic equation. Okay, let's do one more example. So to work out what the product, well, first of all, let's just make sure that these are aqueous. We know that all nitrates are aqueous. Okay, so we can say all nitrates are aqueous, and then anything combined with sodium is aqueous meaning soluble. Now to work out the products, you just put your two metals like that. See how this one has a two, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna put a two here. Um, because maybe, it, it all depends on the valency of what we combine this with. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch these two around. So that means SO4 would go here, and NO3 would go here. Now I need to go check the valencies to see if we need any special numbers. So, Barium, unfortunately I don't have it here on the periodic table, but barium is in group uh, two, 
okay? It's in group two. You can check on your periodic table. So that's positive two. Sulfate is negative two. So these two balance perfectly. If you simplify two and two, it actually just becomes one and one. So you just leave this as it is. Now, sodium is plus one because it's in group one. And then nitrate is negative one. So those balance perfectly. Okay, let's just quickly check um, which is soluble and which is not soluble. So we know that all nitrates are soluble. So we can put this as aqueous because there's a nitrate over there. Now, let's have a look at this one, sulfate. Anything combined with sulfate is soluble except if it's barium, strontium, or lead. Now we have barium, so that means this will be insoluble, meaning it's a solid and it's a precipitate. Now that those numbers, all the inside numbers have been balanced, now we need to go balance the, or in the front of the molecule. And so we start with the metals. So the metals, uh, sorry for barium not being on here, but it is, if you look on your periodic table, it's just under strontium. So barium is a metal and sodium is a metal. So we can start by balancing those. It's just right here at the top that that is a precipitate. Okay, so barium is a uh, metal. And on the left-hand side, we have one. And on the right-hand side, we have one. Then sodium, so barium, and then sodium. Well, let's write this a bit better. Let's put it here. Barium, and then there's one on the left, one on the right. Sodium, there is two on the left and one on the right. So to fix that, you're not allowed to put a number there because we've already checked the valency, plus one, minus one. What you rather do, whoopsie, is you rather put the two there. Okay, so now we have two NAs on the right, so we're good. Now we move on to the next step, which is to balance all non-metals, but don't do hydrogen and oxygen. So that, for example, would be um, nitrogen. So on the left-hand side, we have two of them. And on the right-hand side, we have two of them. Okay, then we can move on to sulfur. So for sulfur, on the left-hand side, we have one. And on the right-hand side, we also have one. There we go. And then, okay, now we can move on to the hydrogens, but there aren't any. And then we can move on to the oxygen. So on the left-hand side, we have six over there, four over there. So that's a total of 10 oxygens. On the right-hand side, we have four plus, and then here we have three, but it's two in the front. So it's two multiplied by three, so that's six and four, so that's also 10. So everything is balanced. So when you've got it written normally like that, that is your molecular equation. So now we're gonna to go to the ionic equation, which is where we break up all of the aqueous substances, but don't break up this one, because that's a solid. So we're gonna say barium. Now barium has a valency of positive two, so it's aqueous, plus. Now this means that there are two NO3s. So two NO3s, like that. Here this means we have two NAs, or we can just say plus, okay, we don't have to say plus one and minus one, aqueous, plus a sulfate. Now sulfate is negative two, aqueous. And then if we now go to the other side, we've got uh, this one, which is a solid. So you cannot break that one up, okay guys? You just leave that as solid like that. And then we're gonna say plus, um, then I'm just gonna carry on over here. We've got two NAs, which are positive, okay, um, in the aqueous. And then we've got two NO3s, which are aqueous. Okay, so that is called your ionic equation. Now to find your net ionic equation, you will cancel everything that's the same on the left and the right. So um, you've got two NO3s and you've got two NO3s. You've got two Na pluses and two Na pluses. Everything else is different. So you've got this on the left and you've got this on the left, but on the right, those parts look different, okay? So your net ionic equation is going to be Ba plus two, which is aqueous, plus SO4, negative two, which is aqueous, and that's gonna be converted into barium sulfate, which is solid.